Imagine this. You're giving your all in a relationship, pouring your heart and soul into it, but then you start to wonder, are they really with you because they care, or is it just for what you can offer them? It's a thought that's as unsettling as it is common. We've all been there, right? Where we find ourselves questioning the intentions of those closest to us. It's like standing at the edge of a cliff, not knowing if the step forward is into the arms of someone who genuinely cares or into a void of uncertainty and exploitation. Today, we're diving deep into this sensitive yet crucial topic. We'll explore the subtle, often overlooked signs that might indicate someone is taking advantage of your kindness. But it's not all gloom and doom. I'm also going to arm you with the tools and insights you need to navigate these tricky waters. So if you've ever found yourself second-guessing someone's intentions or just want to be prepared for future relationships, you're in the right place. Stick around because what I'm about to share could be a game-changer in how you view and manage your relationships. Let's uncover the truth together and turn the tides in our favor. Before we dive in, do me a favor. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and share this video with your friends because, let's face it, watching this entire video without skipping is the secret recipe to becoming a relationship ninja, and who wouldn't want that superpower? 1. Diminishing Comments You know it's something so subtle yet so impactful. Picture this. You're excited about something. Maybe you got a promotion or finally nailed that yoga pose you've been working on for weeks. You share this news with someone, expecting a high five or at least a smile. But instead, what you get is a dismissive, is that it? Or a sarcastic, wow, big deal. Hurts, doesn't it? These diminishing comments are like tiny darts. They might not cause a big wound right there and then, but over time, they accumulate, slowly chipping away at your confidence. It's like having someone constantly trimming your wings every time you're ready to fly. Now, let's anchor this with a bit of stoicism. The Stoics were all about understanding and managing emotions, not suppressing them. So, when someone throws these diminishing comments your way, it's an opportunity, believe it or not. It's a chance to practice resilience and reflection. Ask yourself, why does their comment bother me? Often it's not about the comment itself, but what it triggers in us, maybe a fear of not being good enough, or a past experience where we felt belittled. Remember, in the grand scheme of things, these comments are more about the person saying them than about you. They reflect their insecurities, their limitations. Maybe they feel threatened by your growth, your achievements. It's like they're saying, I can't reach those heights, so I don't want you to either. But here's where the Stoic mindset really shines. Stoicism teaches us to focus on what's within our control. And what's that? Our reaction. You have the power to either let these comments derail you or to see them for what they really are, reflections of someone else's inner turmoil. And how do you respond? Not with anger or defensiveness, but with equanimity and self-assurance. A true Stoic wouldn't engage in petty battles of words. Instead, they stand firm in their self-worth. So, surround yourself with positivity with people who genuinely support and uplift you. Life, when viewed through the stoic lens, is too precious to be dimmed by others' insecurities. Keep your inner peace. Let your actions speak. After all, in the stoic pursuit of personal growth, your self-esteem is not a tool for others to undermine. It's your shield, your strength, unyielding to the whims of those who seek to use you for their gain. Two. Broken promises. We've all experienced this at some point, right? You have someone in your life who's always saying, yes, I'll be there, or sure, I'll help you out with that project. But when the time comes, they're nowhere to be found. It's like they're magicians of words, disappearing right when the act is supposed to start. 
This pattern of broken promises can leave you feeling like you're standing in the rain, holding two tickets to a show that the other person swore they'd attend with you. It's not just about the missed events or the uncompleted favors. It's about the trust that starts to erode with every unkept promise. Now let's sprinkle a bit of stoicism on this. Stoics are big on integrity and keeping one's word. They believe that our actions reflect our character. So when someone consistently breaks their promises, it's not just a flaky habit. It's a reflection of their character, their priorities. It makes you question, do they value me? Do they value our relationship? But here's where Stoicism also gives us a powerful tool. Detachment. The Stoics taught that we should not attach our peace of mind to the actions of others. This is key. When someone breaks a promise, it's easy to let it ruin your day, to let it linger in your mind like a bad aftertaste. But what if you didn't? What if you acknowledged the broken promise, learned from it, and then moved on without letting it disrupt your inner calm? This isn't about being passive or letting people walk all over you. It's about recognizing that you can't control others, but you can control your reaction. It's about understanding that sometimes the best response is to adjust your expectations and maybe to stop relying on the person who keeps letting you down. Remember, in Stoicism, there's a strong emphasis on personal responsibility and focusing on what's within our control. You can't force someone to keep their promises but you can decide how much you'll rely on them in the future. It's about building your life around those who show up, not just with words, but with actions. Actions, unlike words, don't lie. They are the true measure of someone's intent and commitment. 3. Unilateral Benefit This is a big one, and oh boy, it's a tricky territory to navigate. Have you ever been in a relationship where it feels like you're the only one putting in all the work? You're always there for them, whether it's 3 a.m. chats when they're feeling down, helping them move on a busy weekend, or just being their cheerleader. But when the roles are reversed, they're suddenly too busy. Or worse, they just don't show any interest. It's like you're rowing a boat for two, but you're the only one with an oar in the water. This kind of dynamic where the benefit is all one-sided, is not just exhausting, it's unfair. It's like you're a battery they keep drawing energy from without ever recharging you. Now let's add a stoic twist to this. Stoicism teaches us about mutual respect and the importance of balance in any healthy relationship. The stoics were all about harmony in life, in nature, and yes, in relationships too. When you find yourself in a unilateral relationship, it's like you're carrying the weight of two people on a journey meant for companions walking side by side. Stoicism would urge us to look at this situation through the lens of virtue and respect, both for ourselves and the other person. Are we respecting ourselves by allowing this one-sided dynamic to continue? Are we really doing the other person any favors by not addressing this imbalance? Stoicism isn't about being passive or just accepting things as they are. It's about recognizing where you can take action and make changes. So, in a situation where you're feeling used, it's time to stand up for yourself. This doesn't mean you have to confront the person with anger or frustration. Instead, approach it with calmness and clarity. Have an honest conversation about how you feel and what you need. This is where the stoic practice of self-respect comes in. It's not selfish to set boundaries. It's essential for your well-being. But here's another stoic principle. Sometimes the change has to come from within. Maybe it's about reassessing our expectations, or perhaps it's about understanding that not everyone can give back in the way we'd like them to. And that's okay. What's important is that you recognize your value and worth. You're not just a resource for others. You're a person deserving of reciprocal and balanced relationships. So, 
If you're constantly finding yourself in relationships where you're the only one giving, take a step back. Reflect on it. Remember, quality trumps quantity in relationships. You deserve people who not only take, but also give. Who not only receive your support, but are there to support you too. It's all about finding that stoic balance, where mutual respect and effort are the cornerstones of your relationships. 4. Disregard for your emotions or needs. This one's a silent but deep cut. Have you ever felt like when you're speaking about what bothers you or what you need, the other person seems as though they're tuning into a different frequency, like you're expressing your deepest emotions or concerns, and all you get in return is a nod, a hmm, or worse, a complete change of topic. It's as if your feelings are a radio signal and they're just not on your wavelength. This kind of disregard can leave you feeling invisible, as if you're a ghost in your own relationship. Your needs and emotions are like colors on a canvas, but to them, it's as if you're painting in invisible ink. Now, let's bring in some Stoic wisdom here. Stoicism teaches us about empathy and the importance of recognizing and respecting the emotions of others. But it also teaches us about not depending on others for our emotional validation. When someone consistently disregards your emotions or needs, it's like they're showing you a billboard-sized sign that says, your feelings don't matter to me. That's hard to accept, but it's also crucial information. Stoicism encourages us to look at such situations objectively without the cloud of our emotions. It asks us, what does this behavior tell us about the person? And more importantly, what does it tell us about the role they should or shouldn't play in our lives? Stoicism isn't about suppressing your emotions, quite the opposite. It's about understanding them, managing them, and not letting the indifference of others control them. So, if you find yourself in a situation where your emotions and needs are being disregarded, take a step back. Reflect on what that means for you and your peace of mind. It's not about getting angry or upset. It's about recognizing that perhaps this relationship isn't providing the mutual respect and understanding that you deserve. This might mean having a conversation with the person about how their behavior affects you, or it might mean re-evaluating the place they hold in your life. Remember, in the grand scheme of things, your emotional well-being is paramount. You're not just a supporting character in someone else's story, you're the lead in your own. And as a lead, you have the right to be heard, to be seen, and to have your emotions respected. In true Stoic fashion, it's also about finding strength within. It's recognizing that while you can't control how others treat you, you can control how you respond and how much you let it affect you. It's about building up your internal fortress so that the disregard of others doesn't shake your foundations. So, take that stoic wisdom and use it to empower yourself in your relationships. Remember, your emotions are valid, your needs are important, and you deserve to be in relationships where those are acknowledged and respected. 5. Emotional manipulation. This is sign number 5 and it's a bit of a sneaky beast. Emotional manipulation can be hard to spot because it often comes dressed up as something that looks like care or concern. It's like someone is playing chess with your feelings and you don't even know you're on the board. They might use guilt, flattery, or even victimhood to steer you in the direction they want. The end game. To control your actions and decisions, often so subtly that you think it's all your idea. Have you ever felt like you're on an emotional roller coaster with someone? One minute they're praising you, the next they're making you feel like you're not enough. Or they twist your words and actions so much that you start doubting your own memory or judgment. That's emotional manipulation at play. Now, let's anchor this with some Stoicism. Stoics like Seneca and Marcus Aurelius often talked about the importance of being in control of one's emotions, 
and not letting others dictate how we feel. They believed in the power of rational thought and self-awareness. In the face of emotional manipulation, this stoic principle becomes your shield. First, it's about recognizing the manipulation for what it is. This can be tough, especially when you care about the person doing it. But remember, understanding is the first step towards change. Ask yourself, Am I feeling this way because of what they said or did? Are they often making me question my worth or my decisions? A stoic approach here would be to step back and observe these interactions as if you're an outsider. This detachment allows you to see the situation more clearly and rationally. It's about taking control of your emotions and not letting someone else play puppet master. Then, there's the stoic practice of assertiveness. This doesn't mean being aggressive. It's about calmly and rationally stating your boundaries and sticking to them. It's about saying, I understand what you're doing and it's not okay. It's not easy, especially if you're not used to standing up for yourself, but it's crucial for your emotional health. Remember, the Stoics taught that we have power over our minds, not external events or people. So in the context of emotional manipulation, this means recognizing that you have the power to choose how you react. 6. Lack of genuine support. This one's a bit like a silent alarm. It might not be loud and flashy, but it's definitely telling. Ever been in a situation where you're going through a tough time or celebrating a big win and the person you expect to be there for you just isn't? It's like you're climbing a mountain, expecting a friend at your side, but when you look over your shoulder, they're nowhere to be seen. Or worse, they're there, but they're just scrolling through their phone, disinterested. Genuine support in relationships is like the roots of a tree, often unseen, but absolutely vital for growth and stability. When these roots are weak or absent, the tree struggles to thrive. It's the same with our relationships. If you're always the one applauding for someone else, but when it's your turn to take the stage, their claps are absent, that's a problem. This lack of genuine support can leave you feeling undervalued and alone. Now, let's bring Stoicism into the mix. Stoicism teaches us about the importance of self-sufficiency and not relying too heavily on others for our sense of worth or happiness. But it also speaks to the value of mutual support and empathy. The Stoics understood that while we can't control others' actions, we can control how we respond and whom we choose to surround ourselves with. When you notice a lack of genuine support in a relationship, it's a call to exercise your Stoic muscles. First, it's about recognizing that while support from others is wonderful, your self-worth shouldn't hinge on it. You are capable and strong, with or without their cheers. This isn't about becoming indifferent, but about finding strength within yourself, as the Stoics would advise. But Stoicism also teaches us about the value of clear judgment. If someone consistently fails to support you, it's worth asking why you're investing your time and energy in that relationship. Is it a mutually beneficial and respectful partnership or is it a one-way street? Stoicism isn't about cutting people off at the first sign of trouble, but it is about recognizing when a relationship is unbalanced and perhaps unhealthy. In these situations, it's okay to have an honest conversation about how you feel. Maybe the other person isn't aware of their lack of support. Or perhaps they are, and it's a sign for you to reevaluate the relationship. Either way, Stoicism encourages us to approach these situations with calmness and clarity, without bitterness or resentment. Remember, in a world where relationships can often be superficial, cultivating connections that are rooted in genuine support is not just refreshing. It's essential. These are the bonds that not only withstand the test of time, but also propel you forward enriching your life with a sense of shared purpose and understanding. As a Stoic, 
Seek out and nurture relationships where support is a two-way street, where your victories and struggles are met with the same level of enthusiasm and empathy. That's the kind of support that not only uplifts, but also transforms. 7. Constant Competition Ever felt like you're in a never-ending race with someone close to you? It's like every time you share a personal achievement, instead of congratulating you, they counter with their own bigger, better accomplishment. It's exhausting, isn't it? Instead of feeling like teammates, it's as if you're always competing against each other, even over the smallest things. It's like playing a friendly game of basketball, but the other person is treating it like it's the NBA Finals. Now, a bit of friendly competition can be fun and even motivating, but when it becomes constant and one-sided, it starts to eat away at the foundation of the relationship. Instead of mutual growth and shared victories, it feels like a battle where there can only be one winner. But relationships aren't meant to be a competition. They're about support, understanding, and celebrating each other's successes, not overshadowing them. So how does Stoicism help us here? Well, Stoicism teaches us about the importance of focusing on our own path and progress, not comparing ourselves to others. Marcus Aurelius, the Roman emperor and a Stoic philosopher, once said, It never ceases to amaze me. We all love ourselves more than other people, but care more about their opinion than our own. If we apply this to constant competition, it's about realizing that our worth and progress are not determined by how we stack up against others. When you're constantly in competition with someone, it's a signal to step back and reflect. Why is there this need to compete? Is it coming from a place of insecurity, either in you or the other person? Stoicism encourages us to look inward, to focus on improving ourselves and our own virtues, rather than trying to outdo someone else. If you find yourself in this constant state of competition, try having a candid conversation about how it makes you feel. It's not about accusing the other person of being too competitive, but about expressing your desire for a more supportive and less competitive relationship. Remember, in the words of Seneca, another Stoic philosopher, we are more often frightened than hurt, and we suffer more from imagination than from reality. Sometimes, our perception of competition is more harmful than the competition itself. And if the competition continues despite your efforts, it might be time to reassess the relationship. Surround yourself with people who cheer for you, who lift you up, not those who see your achievements as a threat to their ego. In the end, Stoicism teaches us to find contentment and value within ourselves and to seek out relationships that align with those values. It's about cooperation, not competition, about building each other up, not tearing each other down. So let's strive for that for relationships that are more about mutual support and less about who's winning. 8. Absence in critical moments. This is when you really feel the weight of someone's presence, or rather, their absence. It's those crucial moments, the highs and lows of life, where you look around and suddenly realize the person you counted on isn't there. It's like you're in the middle of a storm, looking for a hand to hold and finding the space next to you empty. Whether it's a family emergency, a personal crisis, or even a significant celebration, their consistent absence speaks volumes. This absence is more than just not being physically present. It's about the lack of emotional support when you need it most. It's as if, when the script of your life demands more than just a casual appearance, they're not willing to play their part. This kind of behavior is not just disappointing. It's a clear message about where their priorities lie. Now, let's see how Stoicism helps us navigate these waters. Stoicism teaches us about the impermanence of external things, including relationships. As much as we might want or expect someone to be there for us, the reality is that people have their free will 
their priorities, and their limitations. Stoicism would remind us that while we can hope for support and companionship, we shouldn't hinge our well-being on it. In moments of absence, especially during times when you most need support, Stoicism offers a lens of clarity. It encourages us to look at these situations objectively and to understand what they reveal about our relationships. It's about acknowledging the disappointment, but not allowing it to consume us or shake our inner tranquility. Stoic wisdom also teaches us about self-reliance. It's about finding strength within ourselves during these critical moments. While it's natural to seek support from others, it's equally important to develop the resilience and resourcefulness to support ourselves. This doesn't mean isolating ourselves or becoming emotionally detached, but rather understanding that the only constant we have complete control over is ourselves. If you find yourself repeatedly facing the absence of someone in critical moments, it might be time for a frank conversation. Express how their absence makes you feel and what you need from the relationship. It's not about placing blame, but about setting clear expectations and boundaries. And if the pattern continues, despite your efforts, Stoicism teaches us the value of acceptance and the courage to make difficult decisions. It might mean redefining the relationship or even letting go, not out of spite, but out of a recognition that your well-being is paramount. Remember, in the grand tapestry of life, each person plays their part, but not everyone is meant to be a main character in your story. Stoicism reminds us to embrace this reality with grace and to focus on cultivating relationships with those who do show up, not just in the sunshine, but also in the storm. 9. Lack of Reciprocity his is when the give and take in a relationship feels more like you're constantly giving and they're happily taking, with little in return. It's like you're in a boat, paddling away with all your might, while the other person is just enjoying the ride, maybe even dipping their hand in the water, but never really helping to steer or row. You're sending the good morning texts, making the plans, lending a listening ear, but when you need a bit of that in return, it's like sending a message into a void. This lack of reciprocity can leave you feeling drained, unappreciated, and honestly, a bit used. It's not about keeping a scorecard in relationships, but there should be a sense of balance, a feeling that the effort is mutual. Without it, it's not really a partnership, it's a one-sided affair. Now, how does Stoicism guide us through this? Stoicism is all about finding balance and harmony in life. It teaches us to focus on our actions and intentions, not just the outcomes. So, when faced with a lack of reciprocity, a Stoic approach would be to first examine our actions. Are we giving too much, expecting something in return? Are we neglecting our own needs in the process of trying to please or support someone else? Stoicism also reminds us that we cannot control other people's actions, only our reactions. If someone isn't reciprocating your efforts, it's not a reflection of your worth, it's a reflection of their character. It's important to recognize and accept this without bitterness. We should focus on acting with virtue and integrity, regardless of how others behave. This doesn't mean we allow ourselves to be used, rather, we act with self-respect and wisdom. In practical terms, if you're feeling a lack of reciprocity in a relationship, it might be worth addressing it directly. Communication is key. Express how you feel in a calm and honest manner. Maybe the other person isn't aware of the imbalance. However, if after expressing your feelings, things don't change, it's a cue to reassess the relationship. Stoicism teaches us the importance of surrounding ourselves with people who enrich our lives, not those who drain them. Remember, it's not selfish to want balance in a relationship, it's healthy and necessary. Stoicism encourages us to seek relationships that are mutually supportive and respectful. It's about giving generously, but also about knowing your worth 
and not settling for less than you deserve. So take a moment to reflect. Are your relationships reciprocal? Are they adding to your life or taking away from it? Your time, energy and affection are valuable. Make sure they're being reciprocated in the relationships that matter to you. 10. Betrayal. This is perhaps one of the most painful experiences you can go through in a relationship. Betrayal can come in many forms. It could be a friend sharing your secrets, a partner being unfaithful, or someone you trust letting you down in a big way. It's like you've given someone the map to the most vulnerable parts of your life, and they've used it not to protect you, but to harm you. The hurt from betrayal runs deep because it's not just about what was done, it's about who did it. Betrayal shakes the foundation of trust you've built. It's like having the rug pulled from under you, leaving you to question your judgment, your choices, and even your own worth. The aftermath of betrayal is often a mix of anger, confusion, and profound sadness. Now, let's bring in some Stoic wisdom. Stoicism teaches us about the impermanence of external things, including relationships. It reminds us that people, even those closest to us, can change or act in ways that we cannot predict or control. Stoicism encourages us to find our stability within ourselves rather than anchoring it entirely in others. This doesn't mean we become detached or cynical about relationships. Rather, we approach them with a clear understanding that they are part of the unpredictable nature of life. When dealing with betrayal, Stoicism offers a path to healing and resilience. First, it encourages us to process our emotions, to acknowledge and understand them, not to suppress them. Feeling hurt or angry is a natural human response, but then Stoicism guides us to look at the situation with rationality. What can this experience teach us? How can it help us grow? It's about finding strength in adversity, Stoicism also teaches us about forgiveness, not necessarily because the other person deserves it, but because we deserve peace. Forgiveness in this context doesn't mean forgetting what happened or excusing it. It means freeing yourself from the burden of resentment. It's a gift to yourself, allowing you to move forward without being tethered to the pain. If you're dealing with betrayal, take the time you need to heal. Reflect on the experience with the clarity that Stoicism encourages. What did you learn about yourself? About others? How can this shape your future relationships for the better? Remember, as Marcus Aurelius said, the best revenge is to be unlike him who performed the injustice. In this case, it means rising above the betrayal, not letting it define you or diminish your capacity for trust and connection. Betrayal, as painful as it is, can be a powerful teacher. It can deepen our understanding of life, of people, and of ourselves. It can make us wiser, stronger, and, in a profound way, more compassionate. So as you navigate through this experience, remember that your worth is not determined by the actions of others, and your capacity for trust and love is not diminished by their betrayal. You have the strength the wisdom and the resilience to overcome this and emerge even stronger. Hey, we're halfway through. If you're finding this helpful, drop a comment below and share your experiences. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. Your support means the world to us. 11. Selective Availability Ever noticed how some people in your life are only around when it's convenient for them? It's like they're there for the good times, the parties, the celebrations. But when you need a friend for the not-so-great times, they're suddenly swamped with other things. This selective availability is like having a friend who's a fair-weather fan. They cheer when the team is winning, but vanish at the first sign of rain. It's frustrating right? You're always there for them, answering calls, replying to messages, making time whenever they need you. 
But when the roles are reversed, it's a whole different story. You start to feel more like an option than a priority, a convenience rather than a valued friend. Now, let's look at this through the lens of Stoicism. Stoicism teaches us about the value of self-reliance and the importance of not placing our happiness in the hands of others. While it's natural to want reciprocation in any relationship, Stoicism would remind us that we can't control others' availability or commitment, only our response to it. When faced with selective availability, Stoicism encourages us to reflect on the relationship's value and our expectations. Are we depending too much on this person for our emotional well-being? Are we setting ourselves up for disappointment by expecting more than they're willing or able to give? This isn't about blaming ourselves, but about understanding the nature of the relationship and adjusting our expectations accordingly. This stoic reflection helps in managing feelings of frustration or rejection. It's about accepting that some people might not be able or willing to meet our expectations of friendship. And that's okay. It's not a reflection of our worth, but a reality of their capacity or priorities. If this pattern of selective availability bothers you, a stoic approach would be to have an open and honest conversation with the person. Express your feelings without accusation or bitterness. Sometimes people aren't aware of their behavior until it's pointed out to them. However, if after this conversation, the pattern continues, stoicism teaches us the virtue of wisdom the wisdom to recognize when a relationship is not mutually beneficial and the courage to adjust its place in our lives. Remember, as Epictetus, another great Stoic philosopher said, we cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. In the case of selective availability, it's about choosing to invest your time and energy in relationships that are more consistent and reciprocal. It's about finding peace in the fact that you can be a good friend, even if not everyone can return the favor in the same measure. Focus on those who value and honor your time and presence and let go of the disappointment of those who don't. 12. Making you feel guilty. This one is a real emotional roller coaster. Have you ever been around someone who has a knack for making you feel guilty, even for the smallest things? It's like no matter what you do, it's never quite enough. They have a way of turning situations around, making you feel responsible for their happiness or discontent. It could be as subtle as a sigh when you set a personal boundary, or as direct as a comment like, after all I've done for you, this is how you repay me. This guilt tripping is a form of emotional manipulation. It's a tactic used to control and influence your behavior. It can leave you feeling constantly on edge, walking on eggshells, always trying to do more, be more, just to avoid that feeling of guilt. Now, let's see what Stoicism has to offer us in dealing with guilt manipulation. Stoicism teaches us about the importance of living according to our values and not being swayed by the opinions or manipulations of others. It reminds us that our responsibility is to our own character and actions, not to the unreasonable expectations of others. When someone tries to make you feel guilty, they're often acting from a place of their own insecurity or need for control. Stoicism would advise us to look at the situation objectively. Are you really at fault, or are they trying to impose their own desires and insecurities onto you? It's about separating what is within your control, your actions and intentions, from what is not, other people's reactions and feelings. Stoicism also teaches us about the art of indifference, being indifferent to things that are outside our control. This doesn't mean we become cold or uncaring. It means we recognize what we can and cannot change. And we don't allow ourselves to be emotionally manipulated by things outside our control. If you find yourself constantly feeling guilty in a relationship, 
Take a step back and assess the situation. Are you genuinely doing something wrong? Or are you being made to feel guilty for living your life on your terms? Have an honest conversation with the person making you feel this way. Express how their actions affect you and set clear boundaries. Remember, as Seneca said, we suffer more often in imagination than in reality. Sometimes the guilt we feel is not a reflection of reality, but of the manipulative tactics of someone else. It's important to stay true to your values and not be swayed by guilt. You have the right to set boundaries and make choices that are best for you without feeling guilty about them. Dealing with guilt manipulation requires a combination of self-awareness, clear communication and the stoic wisdom of understanding what is and isn't within your control. You are responsible for your actions, not for managing someone else's emotional responses or manipulations. Stay true to your stoic principles and don't let guilt be a tool used against you. 13. Lack of personal interest. This is when you start feeling like you're just a character in someone else's story rather than a co-author of a shared narrative. It's when you're constantly engaged in conversations that revolve solely around the other person's interests, problems and achievements. You share your thoughts, your day, your victories or your challenges, but they seem disinterested, barely engaging or asking follow-up questions. It's like you're speaking, but your words just evaporate into thin air, unheard, unacknowledged. This lack of personal interest can leave you feeling undervalued and invisible. It's as if your role is to be an audience member rather than a participant. Now, how does Stoicism help us handle this feeling of being overlooked? Stoicism teaches us about the importance of mutual respect and empathy in relationships. It also reminds us that our worth is not dependent on others' recognition or interest in us. Stoic philosophy encourages us to find validation from within, from our own virtues and actions, rather than external validation. It's about understanding that while it's natural to want to be heard and seen, our self-worth shouldn't hinge on someone else's attention or interest. When confronted with a lack of personal interest from others, Stoicism advises us to approach the situation with equanimity. We can try to communicate our feelings calmly and clearly, expressing the need for a more balanced exchange in conversations. It's important to do this without expectation or resentment, understanding that while we can express our needs, we cannot control how others respond. Stoicism also teaches us about focusing on what we can control, and in this case, it's the choice of whom we engage with. If your efforts to create a more reciprocal relationship aren't fruitful, it might be a sign to re-evaluate the dynamics of that relationship. Perhaps your energies and time are better invested in relationships where mutual interest and engagement are present. Remember, as Marcus Aurelius said, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. Ensure that your thoughts are not solely focused on why someone isn't showing interest in you. Instead, focus on building and nurturing relationships that are mutually enriching and where personal interest is both given and received. In the end, lack of personal interest from others can be disheartening, but it also offers an opportunity to reinforce your own self-worth and to seek out more fulfilling and reciprocal relationships. It's a chance to practice the stoic virtues of resilience, self-respect, and the wisdom to know where best to invest your emotional energies. 14. Unilateral Conversations This is when you find yourself in dialogues that resemble monologues, where you're doing most of the talking while the other person seems disengaged, distant or disinterested in contributing to the conversation. It can leave you feeling like you're carrying the entire weight of the interaction, like a one-person show. Now, in the realm of Stoicism, there's wisdom to help us navigate this scenario. 
Stoics emphasize the importance of effective communication and the role of reason in human interactions. They encourage us to express ourselves clearly and honestly while also listening attentively to others. When faced with unilateral conversations, it's an opportunity to practice Stoic principles. First, it's important to maintain our own composure and not let frustration or resentment take over. Remember, we can't control how others choose to engage or disengage in conversation, but we can control our response. Stoicism teaches us to focus on the things within our control. So, in the face of unilateral conversations, we can choose to adapt our communication style. We can ask open-ended questions to encourage the other person to share more. We can practice empathy, trying to understand their perspective and perhaps uncover reasons for their lack of engagement. It's also essential to remain patient and give them space if they need it. Additionally, Stoicism reminds us that our self-worth isn't tied to how much or how little others engage with us in conversation. It's about finding inner contentment and confidence in our own ability to communicate effectively. If unilateral conversations persist, it might be a sign to re-evaluate the relationship or the context in which these conversations occur. Perhaps there are external factors affecting the other person's ability to engage fully, or maybe it's time to seek out more balanced and reciprocal interactions. Ultimately, unilateral conversations can be an opportunity for personal growth. They allow us to practice patience, empathy and adaptability. As Epictetus wisely noted, we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as much as we speak. So, use these moments to refine your listening skills and embrace Stoic principles to navigate them with grace and resilience. 15. Superficial Closeness It's that feeling when you're surrounded by people yet you still feel emotionally distant or disconnected. You might have many acquaintances or even friends, but the depth of those relationships is lacking. It's a common modern-day phenomenon in our fast-paced digital world. In Stoicism, there's a valuable lesson to be learned. The Stoics remind us that the quality of our relationships is more important than the quantity. They encourage us to focus on developing genuine connections with a few trusted individuals rather than seeking validation through a multitude of shallow interactions. When faced with superficial closeness, you can apply Stoic principles to guide your actions. First, it's essential to reflect on what truly matters in your relationships. What are your values and priorities? What kind of connections do you want to cultivate? Stoicism emphasizes the importance of aligning your actions with your values. Next, consider the role of virtue in your interactions. Stoics believe that virtuous actions lead to a life of tranquility and fulfillment. So strive to be a virtuous friend or companion. This means being honest, supportive and dependable in your relationships. Furthermore, Stoicism teaches us to practice gratitude for the relationships we do have. Instead of lamenting the superficial ones, focus on nurturing and cherishing the deeper connections you've cultivated. Remember, the Stoics believed that we should not desire more than what is necessary for a good life, and that includes relationships. If you find yourself surrounded by superficial closeness, it might be time to reassess your social circle. Seek out individuals who share your values and can engage in meaningful conversations. The Stoics valued philosophical discourse, and you can apply this by engaging in deep and thought-provoking discussions with those who share your interests. Ultimately, remember that Stoicism encourages us to find contentment within ourselves rather than seeking it externally. By focusing on cultivating genuine connections and aligning your actions with your values, you can navigate the challenge of superficial closeness with wisdom and resilience. 16. Continued Lack of Respect 
It's a situation many of us have encountered at some point in our lives, when someone consistently disrespects our boundaries, opinions or values. It can be incredibly frustrating and emotionally draining. In the realm of Stoicism, respect holds a significant place. The Stoics believed that respect for others and oneself was integral to leading a virtuous life. They emphasized the importance of treating others with kindness and understanding, even in the face of disrespect. When faced with continued lack of respect, Stoicism offers valuable guidance. First and foremost, it encourages self-awareness. Take a moment to reflect on your own actions and reactions. Are you responding to disrespect with anger or frustration? Stoicism teaches us to exercise control over our emotions, emphasizing the importance of maintaining inner tranquility. Next, consider the Stoic concept of virtue. In Stoicism, virtue is the highest good, encompassing qualities like wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance. When confronted with disrespect, strive to respond virtuously. This means maintaining your composure, showing understanding, and setting boundaries firmly but respectfully. Furthermore, the Stoics remind us of the impermanence of external events and people's opinions. The disrespect you face today may not matter in the grand scheme of your life. Stoicism encourages us to focus on what's truly within our control, our own actions and responses, rather than fixating on external circumstances. It's important to remember that Stoicism does not advocate being a doormat. Instead, it teaches us to address disrespect assertively while maintaining our dignity. This involves setting clear boundaries, communicating calmly, and, if necessary, distancing yourself from those who persistently disrespect you. Lastly, Stoicism emphasizes the value of empathy. Try to understand the motivations and insecurities that may lead someone to be disrespectful. This doesn't excuse their behavior, but can help you approach the situation with compassion. In conclusion, when faced with continued lack of respect, Stoicism offers a path to maintaining your composure, setting healthy boundaries, and responding virtuously. By embodying Stoic principles, you can navigate this challenging situation with wisdom and resilience, ultimately preserving your inner peace and dignity. As we conclude our exploration of these 16 signs, Remember that understanding these dynamics empowers you to lead a more authentic and fulfilling life. By embracing the stoic wisdom we've discussed, you can navigate these challenges with resilience and grace. So, my dear viewers, I invite you to reflect on these signs in your own life. Have you encountered any of them? How might Stoicism's timeless teachings help you respond with wisdom and inner strength? But our journey doesn't end here. On the screen, you'll find a playlist filled with more Stoic insights and life lessons. Click on it to continue your exploration of this profound philosophy. Thank you for joining me today. And remember, the path to a virtuous and meaningful life begins with self-awareness and the pursuit of wisdom. Stay Stoic, my friends, and I'll see you in the next video.